Today we're going to talk about the structure of sentences in natural language. Those are languages like English instead of Python, which is an artificial language that was invented by people. Well, natural language was kind of invented by people as well, but in a very different way, in that all natural languages evolved over time as a result of lots of different people trying to communicate with each other, which is a natural phenomenon about the human species. So we'll focus today on English, but you could do something similar in lots of different languages. Both programming languages and natural language have something in common. They have compositional syntax. Syntax describes the structure of the language, and compositional means that you can take fragments of language and put them together into larger fragments. For example, in Python, there's an OR operator, and it has a particular structure. There has to be something to the left and something to the right, and those two things have to be expressions so that they have values. And natural languages have similar constraints. There's the word OR in English. It's not quite as rigid as in Python. People start sentences with OR all the time, meaning that there's nothing to the left. But it only makes sense to do that in certain contexts, where you're implicitly comparing whatever's to the right of OR to something that was already said. My friend might say, do you want to attend class today? And you might say, or we could just watch the videos. But even though natural language syntax tends to be much more permissive than that of a programming language, there are constraints. There are lots of sequences of words that I could utter that don't really make sense together because we violated the rules of composition. So for example, what comes left of an or in English should be the same kind of thing as what comes to the right. I can say, I exercise or I sleep, that's fine. And I can say cat or dog, that's fine. But if I say I exercise or dog, it's hard to make sense of that because I have the different kinds of things on both sides. Anyway, these structural characteristics are called natural language syntax. One way that people have studied this is to take real utterances that people have said or written and then try to write down the structure of those. And you might have done something similar diagramming sentences when you were in school. Well, people make a whole career of that. So for an English language sentence, like is that a big bug or a little bug? Someone has gone through and annotated this with both its structure and the syntactic category or tag of each phrase within that structure. So all these things in all caps that are two or three letters long are called tags or syntactic categories and they describe the type of phrase. So this whole thing is a verb phrase. This whole thing is a noun phrase. And here are the words down at the leaves of this tree. And this syntactic structure diagram gives us some useful information. Like for the coordinating conjunction or, what are the two things that are being coordinated? A big bug or a little bug. As opposed to, for example, coordinating that a big bug or a little bug, which is not how an English speaker would interpret this. Here's another sentence. I've never seen such a cute kangaroo. I've, which kind of looks like one word, has been split into two words, and in fact, they're parts of different phrases. The noun phrase I and the verb phrase I've never seen such a cute kangaroo appears like this because this is just a contraction of have. And where are these sentences from? Well, from a project called the Child's Project, where researchers actually recorded all of the things that children said, and then annotated them with these syntactic structure diagrams. And these diagrams are often called syntactic parses, or parse trees, for the sentences. So what could we do with this information? Well, Today we're going to do something simple, because this is an introductory course. What we're going to do is try to generate new sentences similar to what this child would have said by performing a simple operation. We're going to take sentences, pick some of the nodes in the tree, for example, this one rooted at NP, and replace it with a node from another tree that has the same tag. Why the same tag? Well, if you switch out this adjective big for a verb, walk, 
you'll get some pretty awkward constructions. A walk bug. What's a walk bug? We want an adjective there, like a big or a little or a cute bug. So if we maintain this right syntactic category, which is represented by the tag, but swap out a piece of a different tree, we might get a new novel sentence, like is that a cute bug or a little bug? And we won't just swap out individual words, we could swap out this whole noun phrase. For example, this one. Is that such a cute kangaroo or a little bug? But to build new sentences in this way, we're going to have to traverse through trees, which means we're going to have to represent these trees using our tree data abstraction, and then use some recursion in order to walk around in them and find which parts we want to replace and replace them. So that's the example for today. Let's get to it.